Today I want to talk about the overcomplication of modern gaming. So what do I mean when I say gaming in the modern age has become overcomplicated? Well, I'm talking about development. I'm talking about release. Now, back in prior generations, I'm talking as far back as like PS2 and PS1, there were, um, there were a lot of games coming out. And let's just look at Rockstar Games, for example. Rockstar Games this generation, the PS5 generation, have put out a remastered version again of GTA V. And I get it, that's their main moneymaker. Respect to them, because even though I'm like, I would just prefer a new GTA at this point, I'm sure we all would, that is their main moneymaker. People still spend to play GTA V, and they should capitalize on that while it's there. People want to play GTA V? That platform should be available to them. I agree with that. Luckily enough, we did get Red Dead Redemption 2 during that era, and that is also a win in terms of gaming. Look, game size is massive these days. Can we admit the maps are the most immersive they've ever been? But we have to remember, back with the PS2, even though people say, oh, but graphics were so much easier back then, PS2 era, something like GTA San Andreas, pushed the PS2 to the edge of its limit. It, it really pushed that hardware. And people forget how big that map was for 2004. When GTA San Andreas came out, it was massive, that map. And yes, obviously we go on to PS3 and you have maps like uh, Red Dead Redemption, you have maps like um, GTA 4, which also felt massive. But how hard is it to develop for a map like that? Obviously it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to develop a map like that and develop a game like that. And we're seeing now that some companies are literally not able to keep up with the demand of, okay, we can't release a game and get some money out of it because this reason. It's not technically what we want to ship. But that being said, we have to keep putting hundreds of millions of dollars into these games to develop for, even though we might see a return of maybe nothing on something if you're developing for Xbox. I mean, Xbox have had some problems in terms of shutting down studios or laying off massive layoffs because, well, this is the same across the whole industry. So it's not only limited to Xbox, but gaming studios have been laying off lots of people because the costs have blown out so much that it's just not justifiable for what the return of a game will be. And this is why it's so overcomplicated. It has overcomplicated the modern gaming space. And it's funny, out of all of this, every modern gaming company, and this includes Steam as well, could take a few pointers from someone like Nintendo. Now you might say, but Nintendo are in the corner doing their own thing. Exactly. Nintendo have never focused on competing and yeah, they competed against Sega. I get that. When the Mega Drive uh, Dreamcast came out, sorry. When Dreamcast came out, they did compete. And Nintendo have competed in the past. But in this console generation, Nintendo are just in the corner doing their own thing. They know they have their market share. They know they have their hardcore fans. They don't need to do these big overblown AAA games to try to get people in. They know they can just ship 2D Mario until the end of time and people will pick up the new console to play 2D Mario. That is where Nintendo succeed where everyone else fails. Because, look, it would still cost a pretty penny to develop a Mario game. Don't get me wrong. But I guarantee it's not as much as, like, 500 million, a billion dollars, whatever. Whatever some of these gaming companies are saying, like, what's, what's uh, Rockstar saying the new GTA cost, the GTA 6, when that comes out? I last heard it was around 250 million. Obviously it would have bloomed since then because inflation and you know you have to pay the workers. I mean there was that big controversy about the workers. But look. Rockstar can justify that because they're still cashing in on GTA 5. But Nintendo, look, they're one of the biggest gaming companies on planet Earth. And I would say they are the second biggest console at the moment, if not the biggest outright. Now people might say, "Oh, but Sony lead the space." Yes, Sony leads the space in terms of sale of consoles, but nobody's selling more games than Nintendo. Nintendo are like worlds ahead of Sony at the moment selling their games. And people might say, but I bought this and this sold really well on the PlayStation. Yes, games sell very well on the PlayStation, but everybody who has a Switch has games like Breath of the Wild. People have Mario Odyssey. Like they are shipping more games than just about anyone in all due respect to Game Pass. 
I think Game Pass ruined Xbox's uh, business model, but as employees at Xbox are saying, it's no longer Xbox, it is more Microsoft gaming at this point. So people within Xbox and that ecosystem are even saying like, this is not, um, this is not Xbox anymore, this is something else. And look, I understand what Microsoft are doing. They're trying to go towards that model of the streaming services and having it available on everything. I mean, in about 10 to 15 years, you could probably run Xbox games on TVs. I think it might even be sooner. I mean, we're already getting to that point now where TVs are like more insanely powered than anything. I mean, the smartphone in your pocket, the smartphone I'm filming on right now can run full scale, full, um, not nerfed games like downgraded and all this. It can run like full res and full whatever games from 10 odd years ago, maybe even five odd years ago. Emulation. But we're getting to that point now where TVs are starting to um, become the main console and people don't necessarily want to go out and buy a $750 console or 800 in Xbox's case and play like four or five games that they actually want to play. And don't get me wrong, there are, there are more than five games out there. I'm not saying there aren't more. There are a lot more. But the average gamer is only going to be like, oh, you know, I want to pick this up because I want to maybe play Halo. Or if they're playing PlayStation, you know, I might want to pick this up. I just want to kind of play Spider-Man. And then from there, I might just check out the new Horizon. And then, I don't know, just wait for GTA. This is the modern consensus of casual gamers. Not hardcore gamers who are going to play every single release. Modern gamers. So most people are not going to run out and buy a console. But why do they run out and buy Nintendos? It's also a family console. Don't get me wrong. Mario can be enjoyed by the whole family. But when you talk about what Switch is doing that nobody else is doing, they haven't blown these games out by scale. I mean, don't get me wrong. Breath of the Wild is massive. And that is from YouTube's clips I've seen, as well as playing the game a bit. I've got it and I've played it through. Uh, not all the way, but I've played it about uh, 25, 30%. And I've been playing it and being like, this is massive. Like, how do they fit all this on the Switch? A um, console that's equivalent to the PS3 in terms of power. And don't get me wrong, it's more powerful than the PS3. But it's not as powerful as the PS4. So that's what I'm saying. It's sort of in that space of PS3, what PS3 probe might have been. But Switch does really well at it. And it doesn't blow these games out in terms of scale. It doesn't blow these games out in terms of price. It does what it does. They focus in on, okay, we want to make a new Mario game. How do we give the user experience, the, the user, the end user, the gamer, how do we give them the best possible experience, but also we don't want to blow this game out and just say, oh, well, we want to put this in, ray tracing, this, this, and this, and this, and this. They focus in on experience and they say, okay, we don't need a game that's massive and, yes, it's immersive in its own right. It, you can immerse yourself in a Mario game, but they don't need to blow it out in terms of cost. And this is the problem with modern gaming because we've become so reliant on stuff like 4K graphics, 60 frames per second, which should be a given at this point, I'll admit. 60 frames per second on games should be a given. But then you have stuff like ray tracing. You have all these modern little features. Some people even say Dolby Vision, we need that. And we need this and this and this and this. Instead of just saying, can we just make a good game? Don't worry about the cost. Like, yeah, if there is a cost associated with it, I want to see gaming companies maintain staff. And if the games are becoming so ballooned in price that they can't maintain their staff, as we've seen with the layoffs, it's a problem for modern gaming. And it's an overcomplication that doesn't have to be there. Modern gaming doesn't have to be so damn complicated. Just make a good game. A good, enjoyable game. One game that I really enjoyed on the PS4 era was uh, Super Meat Boy. A very simple game. And it's not like a massive in terms of, um, it's not massive in terms of scale. It's not massive in terms of anything, but it's a simple platformer. It's like, hey, you jump from a wall to a wall, you stick to it, and then you jump around. There's also different characters you can play as. And something as simple as that still is one of the best games, in my opinion, that like uh, independent studios released during the last era. Super Meat Boy was great. And why was it? Because it was just simple. And look at something like Playable Teaser, PT. That game has such a cult following because it didn't overcomplicate it with a release that came after. I'm sure a lot of people said, oh, we, we, want, we would have wanted to see that Silent Hills game that was coming. We, we might have wanted to see that. But PT has a big following in terms of how many, um, how many people still play it because um, it was simple. 
it was a simple game. You go around, you try to problem solve, and then you just keep wandering this hallway, and you have to problem solve to get to the end of the game. It was a simple 15, 20 minute game, or depending how long you took, you might've taken an hour, might've taken a bit longer, a bit less. But it was a simple, what like lower, um, not as ballooned out, because it was the teaser. Obviously it was a teaser. It was not a proper game. But it wasn't as ballooned because it was just like, hey, here's an experience. It's not, it is a game, but it's also an experience. Here, we want you to experience what the Silent Hill games would have been like if, it, if that development had continued on that one. But that's why it has such a cult following, because it's simple. Anyone can pick up a controller and say, oh yeah, okay, so I just kind of wander around. Okay, cool. And this is the thing. Nintendo do that better than anyone. They know anyone can pick up a Switch console and play Mario. And within pressing two buttons, they'll know what to do. It is simple. And this is the thing. Modern gaming doesn't have to be so overcomplicated. Something like The Last of Us from the PS3 generation that I've mentioned in a lot of different videos on my main channel, um, the physical way, because I used to do my uh, gaming videos over there on the main channel on uh, the physical way. Um, something like... Um, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> but you know... What was I saying? I was talking about... I forget what I was actually saying. But yeah, what I'm talking about is like, they don't have to be as bloomed out as we think. They don't have to be these massive um, AAA, massive open world, bigger than ever. Here's the map sizes compared to the old games, compared to the new ones. It doesn't have to be that. Because something like PT shows there's an audience there. Something like um, Mario shows that People will enjoy smaller games. It doesn't have to be massive. It can just be a good game. And yeah, okay, so I remember my train of thought. So I was talking about the remasters of um, PS3 era games, so The Last of Us. They've brought that back generation after generation because they know it will find an audience no matter what console it's on. The Last of Us is one of the most critically acclaimed games, the original one, most the, one, of, one of the most critically acclaimed games ever. And that's the same as part two. Part two is also critically acclaimed. A lot of games on the PlayStation are critically acclaimed as well as the Xbox as and as well as Nintendo. They all have critically acclaimed games. But PlayStation have remastered that twice already. They they had the PS3, oh, actually, yeah, twice. So they, re, they had the original version on the PS3, they remastered it for PS4 and they remade it for PS5. And yes, without doing too much, they've given it a bit of a upgrade. I'm still not a fan of, um, remasters completely i mean it looks great i'll give it that it looks great but there's a part of me that's like the nostalgic factor of playing the original game as it was intended should be preserved instead of just saying okay we've got this new version now let's erase the old one i still think it should be available and luckily sony have kept the original version at least with ps4 remaster you can't play the ps3 version but you can play the ps4 remaster which was very close to the ps3 version they haven't kept that that's still available on the store but stuff like um, develop, developing for new games, it doesn't have to be as big as people say it needs to be. You can deliver a really good experience in terms of gaming by just giving them something like Mario, like T 2D Mario. I've heard, like, I have Mario Wonder. I haven't got around to playing it yet. But from what I've seen from the, the uh, user feedback, people are loving that game. And why is that? It's not as big as GTA. It's not as big as whatever. It's not as big as Starfield. But it's just a really good game. And you can immerse yourself in it. While you're playing Mario, I don't think you're there saying, this game isn't big enough. It's like, oh yeah, I'm playing a Mario game. Cool. When you're playing something like, um, well, obviously the graphics for uh, GTA now are a bit, the original GTA trilogy, the PS2 era games, those don't hold up as well in the modern day, but... For the era, they were like, you picked them up and you didn't say, this world could be bigger. I think this world could be bigger. It's like, geez, this is massive, this world. Like, you know, you had reservations, but also you were blown away by the time. And I think as times went on, we've come to expect more from these gaming companies, but it's just, we have unreal unrealistic expectations from these gaming companies. And it's not sustainable long-term. These gaming companies cannot continue to put out the massive scale of games with the blown out costs of like 500 million, billion, whatever. They can't afford to do it. And this is why we're seeing layoffs. And as someone like Xbox starts to move towards the streaming platform and the streaming model, which 
in a lot of ways is kind of going the way of what their employees are saying with Microsoft Gaming rather than Xbox, employers at the company would be very nervous. And they, look, I am a fan of job security for gaming, the gaming industry. If they, if people can maintain their jobs in the industry, I am all for it. They need to be able to make a living. And these development teams, they deserve to be paid as much as they're worth. But this is the problem with modern gaming. Because they're so hard to develop for, it's almost like they're sacrificing their family life and having to drop family hours and outside time hours. There was uh, people uh, research done, I don't remember the exact article, that said for stuff like PlayStation, developers were putting in like 96, 97 hours a week or something, which is insane. And look, that is just not sustainable. And I think the industry needs to really take a look at itself and say, can we just go back to basics? Let's go back to an era where, look, give it really good graphics, give it 60 frames per second, give it the base what you would expect in modern gaming. But the game size doesn't have to be that massive. Just give me a good four to five hour game. It doesn't have to be 10 hours. I mean, if you can make it 10 hours, great. If you have enough content there for 10 hours, great. But it doesn't have to be 10, 20, 30, 40 hours. Just give a really good game that you can play and you can enjoy and you can essentially get into. That's where Mario Odyssey was so good. That's where Breath of the Wild was so good. That's where stuff like, for all intensive purposes, stuff like Sonic continues to be good. Retro gaming still has an aura to it. And why is that? Because it was simple. I can still go back and play Tony Hawk or the original Crash Bandicoot or the original Spyro and be like, yeah, this is simple. Like, I can play through this whole game in like three hours, four hours, and I'll have a time in my life. I'll play it and I'll enjoy it. These days it's like, oh, well, you know, if you want to put some time in, it's probably going to take you about 200 hours to complete. And I'm just like, nobody has that sort of time. And yes, I'm a massive gamer. I, I enjoy gaming. But even then it's like, if I'm looking at a game, I'm like, oh, I like, I kind of want to try this game out but I kind of don't want to put in 200 hours in it just to complete the game. And that's the thing, when they do DLC, it's like, okay, I've completed the game, but then they're asking me to come back and play it again or, like, complete it from that point on. It's like, yeah, but I don't want to. It's like I've moved on by that point. I've been like, okay, cool, I've played the game. And then they say, oh, but we're going to put new trophies here, which are which is a whole other story with trophies. We're going to put trophies here to get people in the gate. We're going to put trophies, you have to complete the game, and if you don't come back, you haven't fully completed the game, and it's going to say it on your profile. That's the wrong way of thinking about it. But anyways, guys, what do you guys think? I think we've just become so overcomplicated with gaming that we've lost touch with reality of what gamers actually want, which is they just want a good game they can enjoy, and yes, if they can play it, if they can complete it in two days, that's ideal for most casual gamers. They can be like, oh yeah, I can play that new game, get through it. And also ownership of games, that's a whole other topic. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.